Hey guys, welcome back to World Drum Club. I'm Kalani, and in this master class, we're gonna be covering really important universal rhythms, universal rhythmic concepts that are gonna help you plug into all types of world drumming from all around the world and world music. So I'm really excited. Thanks for being here. Let's get started. Right now we're gonna talk about two rhythmic grounds. And a rhythmic ground is really the fundamental core foundation upon which everything else in a piece of music gets built. So it's really important to understand and be able to identify which types of grounds are rooted in a particular piece of music that you're listening to or that you're moving to or that you are recreating. Uh, everything else gets built up from there. So there are many types of rhythmic grounds. Right now we're gonna look at the two primary feels in a, what we call duple meter, meter or uh, any rhythm that's based on sets of two. In another lesson, we'll look at sets of three, but for right now, we're gonna keep it really simple. We're looking at the two main types of rhythmic grounds. So the first one is called the straight feel. And the straight feel sounds like this. Basically, it's this, one, two, one, two. It's any rhythm that outlines a stepping feel, a marching feel where your feet are moving back and forth. And the key um, criteria of this rhythm is that the beats are evenly spaced and that they are steady and very predictable. So rhythms like this give us a sense of stability uh, right away, they are associated with marching, with forward movement, uh, and they tend to be very grounding and very calming. So you notice in a lot of music, and think about the music that you know and that you recognize, and think about the rhythms that have that kind of very rooted, steady, um, evenly spaced feel, and how they affect you, okay? It's really important to understand that if we're talking about drumming or music that's used to change or modulate or regulate or maintain a certain kind of feeling uh, in yourself or in somebody else that you're serving. All right, the second rhythmic ground or the main category that we wanna talk about is the pushed feel. The pushed feel sounds like this. Bang, bang. pushed feel anticipates the second beat. So if it's slow, let's do the slow version. Dun, ah, uh, one, two, and three, four. Instead of one, two, three, four, one, this would be the straight. We're gonna anticipate, ah, uh, ding, ding, da, a little double time. Dun, 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 ding, dun, dun, ding, dun, dun. Uh, bim ba, bim ba, bim ba. So when we arrive early, we anticipate the beat, and this is the second major beat. So we're looking at macro beats, and micro beats, the macro beats in this case, second one is coming a little early. And those of you who are familiar with the rhythm called clave, and this is another universal rhythm concept that we're gonna talk about in this lesson, the clave rhythm, the first three notes of the clave uh, really represent what is also commonly known throughout the world uh, or in some cultures as the bomba rhythm, the tresillo rhythm. It's ubiquitous uh, all around the world. So as I play now, and I'd like you to think about rhythms that you know uh, or grooves that you've heard that have that kind of anticipatory uh, feel of the second macro beat. Let's start with clave. Da, 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 
ta 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 Rhythms like that pull you to the side a little bit. They're not so much forward moving. They kind of have a, a way of, uh, I always joke around at conferences and I say, well, this is why people from, uh, <laughs> it's kind of stereotypical. I say, this is why Cubans are late uh, because they're always going uh, 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 on the way to wherever they're going. Uh, you know, that's all in good fun. Uh, and it's kind of true, these rhythms pull you to the side more. They're not so much like marching forward movement. Okay, so we have these rhythms, Central South America, West Africa, uh, music from uh, the Middle East or Arab nations. We have this sort of ding, 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 ding. Very important universal rhythm. So the straight feel is in rhythms like samba, uh, polka, rock, uh, reggae, things like that. And then the the pushed feel is in rhythms like funk, uh, a lot of Arab rhythms, the, of course, salsa and rumba, uh, some rhythms from South America as well uh, in uh, Brazil, Argentina. Uh, all over the world, there's rhythms that have both of these qualities. So the straight feel and the pushed feel, really important to be able to recognize. So your homework from this part of this lesson is to identify these rhythmic grounds or these feels as you go out and you listen to different music. So when you're going through your music library or you're listening to the radio, make a mental note and say, ah, that's a straight feel rhythm or that's a pushed feel rhythm. And I think that'll be really eye-opening for you guys. All right, we've got two more main concepts. One is the clave rhythm. And I'm gonna share with you a little variation of that. So in case you're not aware of that, that'll be something new for you to try and, and to listen to for. Uh, and then the other thing uh, is the, uh, what I call rolling eighths. And this is the other really important rhythmic concept or universal rhythmic idea that's out there in a lot of music. And it's important because it's like the glue that holds music together. And the rolling eighths feel will be like this. And I'm gonna use a shaker. Uh, and here's a, here's a little beat so we know where we are. So just listen. So it's this idea of, I kind of call, think of it as the train engine, right? The locomotive. And usually in this, there's two things that uh, differentiate this from just playing eighth notes. One is that they're not all the same volume. In this example, there are two louder notes and two softer notes. And in another video, I'm gonna actually show you guys how to play this, how to play the shaker and create this kind of feel, but that's for another video. Right now, the important thing is to recognize that they're not always the same volume. When, when I play a shaker groove or you hear somebody, a percussionist or drummer playing a shaker, they're usually creating some sort of feel. And part of that feel is generated by the fact that they are not playing all the same volume. So listen again. I could be, it could be like this. Or, or, all right, so there's variations. It's not like there's one way to play these things, but the point is not all of the notes are the same volume, and that's a skill, right? So it's something that 
again, I want you guys to learn. Um, I'll make a separate video about how to play that, how to approach playing that, and how to train yourself to be able to do that. But the important thing is it's not all the same. And then the other thing that's not all the same is not only the volume, not, the, not only the, the dynamics of each note, but the, uh, the space in between the notes. And this gets into micro timing. I know in this video, we're really focusing on macro timing or macro concepts, universal concepts, but the micro timing of the, of the notes, of the eighth notes, gives it a feel or a groove. And that's what's really important, right, in music. It's not just evenly spaced. Uh, and actually on the metronome, I can play that for you here. Let's see. All right. Now that is metronomic, literally. But listen to this shaker groove again with that in mind that they're not all evenly spaced. Two, three. So one of my teachers, Alex Acuna, actually described this really well. He said it's like an egg rolling down a hill. There's a little part where it's faster and a little part where it's slower. So it's not a circle. It's like an egg. There's a little longer space. There's a little note. There's some notes that are scrunched together. All right, that's getting into a little bit finer points that I think we will save for a later time, but I want you guys to be aware of that. The concept here is that if you have a, a, a groove that you're trying to create or that you're listening to uh, an arrangement, that you want to be aware when there is this rolling eighth note feel in the music. This is throughout all styles of music, lots of styles of music, whether it's the ride cymbal of a jazz drummer or the shekere or maracas in a salsa band or the uh, ahatse or uh, sake sake um, rattle basket, you know, or kashishi uh, shakers uh, in uh, other styles of music from South America or West Africa. This kind of idea of, I call it rhythmic graph paper, this, the shaker, or it could be sticks, it's like the, the palitos or the cascara on the timbales uh, or the rhythms that people play on the street with sticks to create uh, the lines that align everything and everything else in the music. All right, so and it's not to say that it has to be consistent eighth notes the whole way through, but the idea that there's something there that is creating a, a like I said, rhythmic graph paper or something like that. So that's the other idea. The final idea in this universal uh, rhythms or universal rhythmic figures is this idea of clave. Uh, a friend of mine, Kim Atkinson, wonderful percussionist and teacher said, he has a whole presentation that he calls clave consciousness. And he points out that the clave rhythm is actually implied, if not explicitly, uh, explicit in music. In other words, it's, it's not only played literally in the music, but it's also implied in a lot of music. So getting back to that clave rhythm, let's look at it again. Three, four. This is son clave. This is the most common clave that many of you probably know. There are different types of clave rhythms, not too many, but a few. One of the other main types of clave rhythms is rumba clave, and that's used in Central America and the Caribbean uh, to uh, accompany uh, rumba and wawanko and those kind of things. So this is the other thing I want you guys, this is homework for you. In addition to the son clave, the kind of plain clave, or the most popular clave that we all know. Listen for this clave, and I'll give you guys notes. If you're a drum club uh, member, which I hope you are, uh, I'll give you guys notation for these things, and I want you to listen for the rumba clave in some music. You probably have to download or get some 
uh, Central American music, right? Some uh, rumba. But listen for this. Two, three, four. So that third note comes a little later. And another time, in another lesson, uh, we'll do a little master cl class and breakdown of the rumba clave. But you guys will get the notation, drum club members, so just check that out and listen for that. I think you'll find it's very interesting. But the bigger concept here is that there is this clave feel. Ding, 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 Okay, so your homework when you're listening to music, see if there is a little bit of that clave feel. How is your clave consciousness? Are you conscious? Are you aware of the implied clave rhythm that you could find in a lot of styles of music? And this is not just limited to uh, what we think of as Latin music. Uh, it's in West African music. It's in Brazilian music. It could be in Arab music. Uh, it can be in commercial music, in pop music. Okay, so let's review. We've got two main types of grounds, straight feel and pushed feel. We've got the rolling eighths idea of jacka 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 jacka, whether it's a shaker or somebody's playing a rhythm on cowbells or on the side of a drum or on a hi-hat, uh, all those kinds of instruments, rhythmic graph paper, uh, the thing that aligns everything else and holds everything together. And then we've got this idea of the clave rhythm. Son clave, the popular clave, ba, 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 and a variation called rumba clave, ba, 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 a little bit uh, more exotic, a little more sexy. Okay, so thank you guys for joining me. I hope this is useful information. If it is, let me know. If it's not, let me know. Uh, I want to thank all you guys who are supporting World Drum Club over at Patreon. You can go to Patreon dot com slash Kalani to become a member and get the extras that non-members never see. Uh, thanks again, you guys. Let me know what you need. Uh, I'm available at social media at, at Kalani Music, and you can always send me an email at office at Kalani Music dot com. Thanks for watching.